Peace. Peace, love, and life, family. It's your girl, Morgan Renee Myers, tuning in with another reading of Feeding the Soul by Tabitha Brown. We are now in part three of the book. Um, so it started off, well, let me go back to the part one. It was called That's Your Business, and it had the first six chapters. The second part was called Have the Most Amazing Day. These are all taglines that the author is the tab of the brown uses so part one that's your business part two have the most amazing day and now we're in part three don't you dare go messing up nobody else's you hear <laughs> so we're on chapter 13 and it is entitled show up and let the blessing be the motivation so let's get right into it it starts off with a quote by shirley chisholm that reads you don't make progress by standing on the sidelines, whimpering and complaining. You make progress by implementing ideas. I like that. Whenever I'm having one of those moments when I don't want to do something, I remind myself that there was a time when I couldn't do it. There's something about sitting in gratitude that pushes you when you need it. I encourage you to let your blessings be your motivation to do the things that you don't necessarily want to do. Because, honey, the blessing is the fact that you still get to do it. All right now, come on, Tab. My mom used to say, I don't like what I've been through. And that's 100% true for me. I bet that it, wait a minute. I don't like, oh, I don't look like, okay. My mom used to say, I don't look like what I've been through. And that's 100% true for me. I bet if you, I bet that if you took a moment and looked back over your life, you realize that it's true for you too. But we have to be careful with that also because we know how to show up and look good. We know how to play the part and present ourselves in a way that hides the journey. Mm, let me go back on that. It says, my mom used to say, I don't look like what I've been through. And that's 100% true for me. I bet that if you took a moment and looked back over your life, you'd realize that it's true for you too. But we have to be careful with that also because we know how to show up and look good. We know how to put on a front, basically. We know how to play the part and present ourselves in a way that hides the journey. And, of course, people buy into the look. They believe what they see. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to convince them that we're all right, that we're good when we're not. That's when the saying becomes less of an affirmation of our healing and more of a way to hide our pain. That's why I firmly believe it is our job as humans to take the time to check in on each other. I don't care how good someone looks, they could be falling apart inside. I don't care how well they are dressed or what car they drive, they could be one paycheck away from being homeless. Baby, it does not matter what someone looks like on the outside if you never take the opportunity to get to know the person on the inside. So let us all be mindful that just because someone looks amazing doesn't mean they haven't been through something. A diamond may come from coal, but it's cut to shine and be beautiful. Yeah, we are all diamonds, but what in the world do we have to break through to get to shining? Very good, very good. The neck pain, stenosis that I still deal with as a result of my accident did a tremendous amount of damage to my spine. The top of my spinal cord is deteriorating and that comes with a great amount of pain. I manage it very well now because I have been introduced to healthier options, food, supplements, and therapeutic modalities for dealing with the inflammation and pain, but it is not gone completely. Some days I still wake up in a lot of pain, but what do I do? I put my I put my face on. I fluff Donna up real good. Donna is the name of her afro. I fluff Donna up real good, put on a cute dress, and go to work. But here's the thing. Just because you see me in my dress and earrings, smiling, doesn't mean I'm not hurting. Doesn't mean I didn't want to sleep in. It means that despite everything, I showed up. I remember the time when I couldn't get out of bed and decided that because I could, I would. Now, be clear. Tab isn't saying ignore your pain. I'm not saying for you to forego rest and relaxation when you need it. Lord knows we all need to have more balance in that regard. But I am saying that once you can manage whatever it is that's causing you trouble, figure out a way to show up for yourself. Don't let it take you out of here, you hear? Sit in gratitude that the pain is not as bad as it could be or as it once was and use that as your motivation to propel you forward. And don't forget that nearly everyone around you is doing the same thing. Every day, people are showing up for their lives. They do it because they have partners and children counting on them. They have jobs 
to be done. That's life, right? But let your own showing up build empathy in you so that you can turn around and check in on the next person. It only takes a minute to stop and have a little conversation. How are you? You all right? goes a long way when folks are smiling through their pain. Let us be better humans when it comes to this, yes? Check in with yourself. And once you know you're good, go ahead and check on somebody else. Good? Go ahead, Sam. Yes. Hold on, that's not the end of it. Um, quick commercial break. This is brought to you by Live Alkaline Water. Black-owned water from Black-owned land. Might as well buy it from the Black man and woman. Mm. This is a locally sourced water out here in Yakinville, North Carolina on indigenous land. Um, it's bottled by Black Owned Watering, uh, Black Owned Bottling Company in Winston-Salem. And myself and a few of the good brothers that distribute this water, uh, we deliver all across North Carolina. We also ship. We be in Atlanta a lot. We be up north, Philly, Jersey, all of that. So you might want to try it out. It's the best hydration in the nation. Moving on. Honey, you want to know the real catch to all of this? When you show up for yourself, you just might find out that the thing you didn't feel like doing or that you were afraid to do, you actually enjoy, maybe even love. For a very long time, I would tiptoe around working out. Oh, talk to me, Tab, because that's, 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 that's the one I need to get a grip on because I'll be inconsistent. All right, what she, she got to say? For a very long time, I would tiptoe around working out. There were reasons, of course. One, I didn't grow up in a family that made fitness a priority. My mom was always on a diet of some sort, and she would walk for exercise, but that was it. I'd never really seen my dad work out, so when I started to not feel so great about my appearance, I thought, maybe I should work out. But I was weary of doing anything strenuous because of my neck injury. I went to see several different doctors about my neck and back, and more than one said, perhaps if you start working out and weight training a little bit to strengthen the muscles in your neck and back, you may see some relief. And as much as that sounded like it could be helpful, in the back of my mind, I was so afraid that I might hurt myself more. It's almost as if I was using my injury as an excuse not to show up for myself. Oh, I do that. I almost using my injury as an excuse not to show up for myself. Well, it's going to hurt more, or this might make it hurt. Mm -hmm. But you ain't even tried it at all. It might. All the, the what ifs, the, uh, the assumptions. Child, we got to stop that. Um, I wouldn't even give myself the opportunity to see if it was going to work. That went on for well over a year. Honey, I fall hard to not go to the gym. I was full of fear. I knew that on a regular day, a flare-up in my neck could have me stuck not being able to turn my head to one side for a week. What would happen if I actually made it worse? I didn't want to be out of commission any more than I had to be, but the words of the doctors kept eating at me. My own words to friends and family came back to haunt me. See, I was the first person to tell somebody how they could help themselves, and there I was, not showing up for me. You ain't even going to at least try to see if the gym thing can work. So, I finally got a gym membership. I was always good with walking or running on the treadmill or using the elliptical, but the weight training was scary. It seemed too hard, and this is the guy's honest truth. I was so afraid to look ridiculous. Me too, Ted. That's why I don't like going to the gym. I don't like people looking at me. I don't like, mm, -mm. It's why I never took aerobics class. It's why beyond the fear of re-injury, I didn't go anywhere near the weights. I cared too much about what people thought. Me too, girl. I didn't want them to say, Lord, have mercy. This woman doesn't know what she is doing. I literally made up all these stories in my head of what other people would be thinking about me at the gym. Yo, this is me. This is me. <laughs> these are all the thoughts I have. I really do not like the gym. Not, not like I'll do a Zumba class or a dance class, um, home workouts. Uh, you know, but I do not like being seen in the gym. And I know people be like, oh, ain't nobody looking at you or, or focused on you. They focused on this. Stuff. I'm like, yeah, I hear you. But I be looking at people in the gym. When I'm on a treadmill, I'm looking around. I'm seeing people. And I don't even like seeing people sweat for real. So I don't want to be in there doing all that. Like maybe a private home gym or um, like I've been at some of my friends' apartment complexes. They have little gyms. Like maybe, you know, it's a minimal amount of people. But it, I just really... <sighs> but I hear you, Tab. All right, get over myself and just go to the damn gym if that's what I want to do or get into the activities that's going to, you know, cause me. Like, the uh, there's a little young lady I follow. She uh, was, uh, was killer, killer moves. Uh, she has, like, Zoom, not Zumba, but she has different challenges. So it'll be, like, a, a squat challenge or a jump rope and jumping jack challenge. She also does dance fitness classes. So I, if I'm not going to do the gym, then I need to find other avenues that is going to help me tap into um, getting some movement in these limbs.
So yeah, I literally make up all these stories in my head about what other people would be thinking about me at the gym. Honey, that was a whole mess. Because here's what I know now. There wasn't a single person in that gym thinking about me. I convinced myself these people were going to see me and say, oh, she's totally out of shape. When in reality, everyone in that space was dealing with their own issues and trying to reach their own goals. Underneath all my fear and hesitation was a deeper truth. I would rather stay in pain ooh, than do what I needed to do to heal. Mm. I think this chapter is for me. Because I've, I've been having some pet talks with myself lately about why do you keep doing stuff or not doing stuff that you know is going to lead you to what? Mm. Mm, okay. I would rather stay in pain than do what I needed to do to heal. Gratefully, something just clicked one day and I said to myself, girl, how much longer are you going to put yourself through this? How are you going to know if you don't even try? Stop worrying about what the folks think about you. I went to the gym and I admit the first two days made me super nervous. I did my normal treadmill and elliptical routine and then sat in the sauna for a while. Oh, fancy gym. I'd shown up. That was the first step. Not too long after that, I started watching a couple of videos on YouTube that show exercises for strengthening the neck and the back. I decided to just go for it. I would try those exercises the next time I went to the gym. I figured I didn't have anything to lose, and if somebody said something to me about doing it wrong, I just asked, well, can you help me do it right? But honey, no one was paying me a bit of attention. I did have one or two people come and say, do you want me to help you with such and such, or do you want any tips? But it was all in kindness. Eventually, weight training became something I actually loved to do. See? There I was, having wasted almost two years being afraid of something, constantly talking myself out of it when it turned out to be something I enjoy. I did the same type of thing in my freshman year of high school. I've been acting in church and school plays ever since I was a little girl, but in high school, there was only one drama teacher, and the rumor was that Miss Fincher was the meanest teacher ever. I was so afraid to take her class. I listened to people around me who said, oh, you don't want to get her. She is so mean. And I did not take her drama class, literally, out of fear. Ninth grade passed, then tenth grade passed, and I was still claiming that the class was too hard and the teacher was too mean. By eleventh grade, I had an English teacher named Miss Clark who was also into drama. I started doing theater with her in the community, and one day she asked me, "Why are you not in Miss Fincher's class taking acting?" I said, "Well, you know her; she's not that pleasant, and she's hard." Miss Clark said, "Who said that?" I started thinking of all the people who told me these bad things about her. None of them had ever actually taken the class. Miss Clark got me together, though. Tabitha, when you go into the world, there are going to be a lot of hard things you're going to go through. And you're not going to have a choice. And you're going to have a choice not to take it. And you're... Wait a minute. Tabitha, when you go out into the world, there are going to be a lot of hard things you're going to go through. And you're not going to have a choice not to take it. Not to like the class. Why not start now with figuring out how to get past something that you're fearful of? Miss Fincher is an amazing teacher. She's tough, but this is her craft, and she's very serious about it. I took Miss Fincher's class in my senior year, and it was the best class I'd ever taken. She taught me so much. Miss Fincher was so cool, and she loved me as I did her. I couldn't believe I lost the opportunity to study with her earlier in those three years of high school. I've been I've been taking classes and doing community theater outside of school when I could have been going to school every day and getting some amazing acting instruction, all because I thought it was too hard, all because I allowed myself to be influenced by people who didn't know what they were talking about. People who have never done the thing you're aspiring to do should rarely be able to influence you or your decisions. How do they know what's right or wrong for you? Honey, they don't. They have no idea. Um, There was this quote I used to hear. Um, that said, if I, if I take people opinion, then I, ha if I accept people's op opinion, I have to accept their lifestyle or something like that. Or I don't accept people's opinion who don't have the life. I can't remember the quote, but it was basically alluding to that. Like, how are you going to take advice from somebody that has never even done what you're trying to do? Now they can give insight. They can um, maybe foresee some things that you should be keen to. They can, you know, have their own opinions about the matter. But if you've never even tried to do what I'm doing at all, haven't taken the steps in the slightest, how can you actually really tell me much? Because you have no idea. Yeah. 
When I recently started my online business, I had to wade through my own anxiety and other people's opinions about me doing it. I had to say to myself, girl, if you don't start, you ain't never going to learn. So I learned to stop running from things. I'm human, so I do take a moment to feel what I feel, but then I move forward anyhow. After doing that enough times, there is now very little I'm afraid to try. I want that for you, too. Listen, just start, baby. I firmly believe that if God places something in your spirit and you think of it more than twice in a day, you're supposed to do something with it. What a wonderful way to live life. That's beautiful. I'm I'm very much driven like that. I just feel something. I don't always know how it's going to come to fruition. I don't always know the ins and outs of how it's going to get done. I just have a feeling and I move off of it and spirit handles the rest. So thank y'all for tuning in to chapter 13. Um, show up and let the blessing be the motivation. Just be thankful that you are able to do what you are able to do where you're at and not let what you don't want to do interfere and get in the way of what you should be doing. So, if you're watching this video, that means you're waking up. So now, if you haven't already, make sure that you give thanks, that you stretch, that you go over your goals, uh, that you speak affirmations over your life, that you moisturize, brush your teeth, wash your face, that you hydrate. Did I say that already? Drink some water, pray, meditate, all that good stuff. Uh, at least five minutes before you continue on with the rest of your day. If you haven't already gotten in your car and went to work, or if you have... Make sure you take five minutes for yourself because self-care, self-love, you matter, all right? I'll tune in with y'all again soon. Y'all have a great rest of y'all day. Peace.